Welcome to Roleplay Roulette, where we take the bullets for you. Today we'd like to talk to you about a theme in storytelling that is as old as the written word itself. Like, seriously, since Sanskrit. Humanity has struggled with reconciliation of two basic archetypes for as long as it can remember. Since Shamhat saw the good in Enkidu and tamed him so that others might see his value as well, the beauty and the beast has been with us. We can see this parallel in the game we'd like to discuss today, extrapolated in both the protagonist and the setting. Outer space, like any unknown frontier, is wild, bestial, dangerous, and untamed. It is cold, uncaring, and cruel. However, it is also pristine enchanting, untouched, a source of beautiful sights unseen, and bountiful resources if it can only be tamed. Likewise, there is the animal, the explorer, the invader. Animals are beasts by definition, and humans nonetheless. Like the dragons of legend, we can see in them jealous qualities, cleverness, strength, vitality, ingenuity, like distant honorable noblemen in fealty of the greatest queen, nature, the wild law, wilderness, and space. And this dichotomy is exemplified better in fewer places than in the games of Pierce Frazier. You know, you could have summed up those three paragraphs with, this is another furry game. God damn it. This is Hicks and Draconis by Weapons Grade Funk. You piece of shit. Alright, with that monument to Fox's pretension out of the way, let's talk about the game! Hicks and Draconis is set in the near-distant future, and if the preamble didn't explain it well enough, is about exploration of the final frontiers, space, and genetics. However, these frontiers are not left to us. Rather, it is left to our strange children created as we explored the latter frontier. In this vision of the future, humanity is gone and we have bequeathed our solar system to a new race of anthropomorphic people called Vectors. They were made by humanity for reasons that I could tell you about, but that would take an entire video, and we try to keep these to 10 minutes. Seriously, I can't begin to scratch the density of the setting history here. It'd be like trying to compress the Mahabharata into a pocket digest. Now, normally I have some choice words to say about anthropomorphic characters, but I don't get the same sense of pointless laziness in this game. The setting justifies them in a way that, say, furry pirates or Ironclaw don't bother to. Characters are further diversified by their morphism, or genetic anomalies that crop up from time to time. Members of the community will recognize tors, ferals, micros, and strange body colorations. Because no furry product is going to satisfy its niche if you can't have blue wolves. Seriously, furries, what's with the blue wolves? Characters are built by picking a species, such as feline, a canine, a bird, or a lizard, a morphism to customize them, and spending points to customize attributes, education, loyalty, and finances. Those last two are big ones, by the way. The future of HSD is one of post-government corporatocracy, and the companies that consider you a good customer and employee will make a big impact on your life. Good grief, this game is so thick. There is so much to talk about, and we're already running long. The system uses dice pools in an interesting way. The players will assign different attributes dice, either d12, d10, or d8. These attributes are body, mind, community, and finance. However, there's more to them than that. Each attribute has five sub-attributes, which are assigned dots. Each dot creates a pool of the appropriately assigned die. Actions outside of combat often have a great deal of wiggle room for how they are accomplished. Can your community presence be used to intimidate information out of a salary man? Or would it be better to trick him out of it with mind dexterity? Regardless, you'll augment the role with good old-fashioned skills. Skills are rated from 1 to 3, with a rare 4th level for the absolute paragon. Skills are added to each die that you rolled numerically, and anything that comes up to an 8 or higher is usually a success. So like the cold, empty void of space, this system is very unforgiving. Luckily, it knows when to keep the rolling sparse. Despite being a little too demanding, especially of the D8s, the system is usually very smooth and easy to use. Usually! Usually, he says. That's a big usually there. Combat is lethal, and the author expresses that in big, bold letters in a sidebar. Guns are not toys. Combatants are assumed to simply hit if they succeed at all, and multiple successes rack up damage very quickly. A character's best chance of avoiding this is cover and armor, which are heavily emphasized. Each character has a battle pool, a number of points spent to perform a variety of interesting actions on their turn. And then there is Nerve. Nerve acts as sort of a secondary HP, and represents the character's willingness to stay in the fight. It's only depleted when no combatant has any armor remaining, and boy is it convoluted, complicated, and unnecessary. It doesn't feel out of place in HSD's middle school, system-heavy, miniatures combat-inspired system, but it stands out as very demanding and high-maintenance. 
I don't want to be the negative guy, but I want to talk a bit about the nerve system. I don't like it. I think it's unnecessary. I don't like starting, yeah, starting off on such a negative note, but the nerve system Let's is the way. probably yeah. the worst part of the game. Having a mechanical system for when enemies flee a battle, for example. Yeah. yeah. That is, that's something the GM can just handle. I feel like. I, yeah, that's that's the way I've kind of felt about it. Especially considering nerve doesn't really affect anybody as long as anybody still has armor. It is probably the easiest engine in the entire game to just strip out and ignore. Just hand wave. Yeah, you just take yeah. it out and it, you know, just do the job for it that you're yeah. supposed to be doing as a game master anyway. Right. And boom, it's not a problem. So Agreed. That's, that's one thing I can say for nerve is it's so easy to ignore. This game is actually an oddity. It is a furry game. It doesn't alienate me. I know, it's so weird. It's right? weird, and I think part of it is actually that, one, you can tinker with how they're laid out, you know, going for like the like the, the centaur build, or the, um, you can actually hit, you can actually do one that's built like a regular animal. Uh, uh, what are they called, a lateral? Laterals. Yeah, laterals. Laterals. Stuff like that. The alternate character types that they've got, are really they're cool. still, I mean, basically you can play a furry, a robot furry. It's not just standard sci-fi epic, but everyone's a squirrel. I have troubles also with the ledger system. Like, it's really confusing to me, and I don't know if I just didn't read it well enough, or... It's not. It's really straightforward. It's just unusual. It's it's something we're also, not used to seeing in games. Also, I find it a little weird to have your character's finances be an attribute. So you can actually game the system a little bit to get more money. Yeah. The problem being that even if you game the system completely, like you completely make, you know, the character who is a mouse, who is a who is a fennec fox cyborg with super, um, I know I don't know if Coxon actually they actually can't with it. have a financial okay, trait. So fine, you make a <laughs> sure you, you can make, pick the worst possible example. <laughs> sure. in well, two books. Sure, I did. I made a character that was number crunched from the ground up to focus on the financial abilities to generate more money and through ledger and to let other characters do the same. This was exactly the, the example I was Wasn't looking for. Wasn't that our boss in the game? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Candace Mammon. Yeah. Eh, yeah. You just, did you just get that? <laughs> no, I just, I didn't remember her last name. Ah. The logic is that in the scope of a game, you don't have time to improve yourself by that amount of margin. Yeah. You don't have time to go to school for a, you know, 12 week course in order to learn this stuff. So what you're actually doing is you're going in and being surgically improved or you're having um, information shoved into your brain with a machine right. yep. and you're paying to do that. It's, so, it's really it's really cool, honestly. It's, it's like, an I wish you could approach. earn credits a little bit better. Like well, you said, I'm, with a number crunch character, it still isn't enough to like support a party. Yeah. Um, well, it's not even enough to buy reasonable equipment. And that's what I was groping towards is... If you, if you get the maximum amount of money you can possibly have, it's a tenth of what you need. And science fiction is gear dependent. I have two criticisms that are concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is randomly generated experience points. I find that concerning. I don't know how I like that. It's an yeah. interesting concept. It's interestingly executed. It is different. And it does, for what it, it does do what it wants to do. The other side to that is being able to number crunch a character to be able to generate more experience is concerning. Though the problem Shady. with that is, is that no matter how hard you number crunch for money at the beginning of the game, Still not enough. you won't get enough. Oh no, by no means. Like basically what you're doing is you're giving up your character so that everybody can advance quicker. And like Which is why little, you made it an NPC. Right, that's why I made it an NPC to just, you know, and also that was an experiment to game the engine. It's what you do when you review an RPG, you redline it. It's why most people, when they play an RPG, they don't play the party's stockbroker. Right. They usually I think play it would be interesting to have a team of three accountants, though. They just sit at home and play the, play the stock market. Yeah, so they're like those freaking <laughs> creepy guys from the Venture Brothers. Yeah. What are they oh, called? Oh, the Silent Partners. The Silent Partners. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love oh, those guys. This, make this game happen. Well, we're critical of this game because... Honestly, I, I think we it. all love it. <laughs> I do. And we want to see it improve. Thankfully, there is a second edition yeah, coming out soon. Yeah, so Mr. Frazier is working on a second edition. He's been talking about quite a bit. And not only is there a second edition, they have minis now. Yeah. Which, oh, yeah. Have you if seen you them? watch this, I have to beg of you, please make polar bears. <laughs> My character is a polar bear, and I can't make him. Please. <laughs> I tend to feel that he his skills oh, like oh writing God. the setting. I okay, would well. read novels about this setting. Absolutely. That's how good it is. That could be interesting. Uh, also, it's happening. 
yes! even what they've managed to put together in the setting and make it make sense it's so big is oh impressive the scale is impressive the ideas are impressively kind of creative yeah and I won't go into it but the whisper oh, are just are chilling neat. they're super cool they're so he's actually said that he's gonna publish a book that has the true history of the solar system nice. what right. really happened and then urge people not to read it. And then he and then he <laughs> urges people not to read it so they don't ruin yeah. the mystery for themselves. But. So th this might be the first time you'll ever see me just get this game oh, about a furry oh, game. Because I don't say that. I usually say, if you can deal with it being furries, get this game. Go ahead and buy a copy of this game. Like right now, I would recommend getting the PDFs. Yeah. There you go. Like get the PDFs of this game. Yeah. The core book's actually quite inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it's quite inexpensive. The extended core actually costs quite a bit more than the core book. At least it isn't But necessary. they have pretty robot ballerinas in it. That's important. <laughs> it's very important. So if you don't want to be a furry, you can play a robot. Okay, so the end of this is going to be Seven Realms Productions heartily endorses Ixwent Draconis. This is an awesome game. I heartily recommend going and checking out the PDF of this. It is quite inexpensive on drive through RPG. There will be links to that in the description, as well as links to our website, sevenrealthproductions.com, or Twitter, or Facebook, yada, 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 all that good stuff. Until next time, as always, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. I'm going to do this oh, until you do. So please help, check help out save our him, Twitch. Save him, save him from this by hitting like and subscribe. Oh, the power is in your hands. It hurts. The power is in your hands. Save me.